Entailment is another relationship between uh, sentences which help us understand their truth values. It's very interesting and, and a deep relationship. And in such a relationship, we see as its name itself shows that some sentence entails the meaning of another sentence. So it's, it's a deep uh, meaning related connection between two sentences. Let's try to define it according, according to the term of truth. If we say that a sentence P, we roughly call it P, entails a sentence Q, when the truth of the first P guarantees the truth of Q, the second sentence, uh, and the falsity of Q, that means if Q is, is wrong, it's not correct, uh, also uh, makes us believe about the falsity of P, we can say that they are in a relationship of entailment or in other words we can say that A entails, entails P or P entails P, uh, Q. So uh, putting it in, in more simple words we can say that two sentences can be considered to have a relationship of entailment when the truth of one guarantees the truth of another and the falsity of the other current is the falsity of uh, the first one. So they are in a kind of relationship of essential uh, connection of meanings. Let's take a, an example here. The anarchist assassinated the emperor and the second sen sentence, sentence says the emperor died. Uh, we can see that and assuming that if the emperor, emperor is the same which is being mentioned in, in both of these sentences. If emperors are different, there is no question of connection between sentences. The question of connection only rises with, when the person being mentioned here, the emperor is the same. If somebody tells us A and we believe in it, then we have to believe in B. Right? If we believe that an anarchist has murdered or killed the emperor, we cannot deny that emperor has died. So, if somebody tells and we believe that A is true, then B has to be true because they are in a relationship of entailment. It is impossible somebody to assert A and deny B. Entailment is not an, um, uh, an inference uh, in traditional logic. Rather, uh, it's a deep connection of meaning. We do not deduce, we do not infer from it. Rather, the meaning of entailment are included in the structure of, the, uh, of both sentences. We do not have to reason to get, uh, get A, uh, get from A to B to reach uh, the meaning or the truth relation between these two sentences. We don't have to reason anything. Rather, we just know it in instantaneously uh, because of our knowledge of language because as I said how the sentence has been constructed it entails a certain meaning. Let's see how the truth based definition of entailment uh, mentioned above uh, in the previous uh, uh, words I have just shared has been exemplified. Let's follow this in, in a stepwise process and this would help you to understand the relationship of entailment. At step one, let's see if P, if P, the anarchist assassinated the emperor, is true. Is Q automatically true that emperor has died? Yes. If if we believe that anarchist has murdered the king or the emperor, then uh, emperor has died. Then Q is automatically true. So check one is there. Step 2 is, if Q, the emperor died, is false. Uh, is P, the anarchist assassinated the emperor, also false? Yes. So that would also be false. So the check 2 is also there. Step 3 is, uh, we could conclude that P entails Q. Note, if P is false, uh, then we cannot say anything about Q. It can be either true or false. 
the question of entailment usually arises when when p is true right and then we could say that it entails the second statement or not but if p is false usually in in uh, with most of the scholars uh, the assumption is that question of entailment doesn't arise in such situations to show this relationship in a logician's truth table we we use certain symbols we we use uh, the words alphabets p and q for two arguments which uh, or two sentences which have the relationship of entailment and we use these arrows to show the direction of the argument in which direction it is uh, leading either p is leading to q or q is leading to p in order to show when and then direction all right let's move forward to a truth table of entailment we have two arguments on the top p and q and we could see the direction if p is true here you can see that if p is any uh, that means the first sentence is true then q is also true because p entails q if p is false first sentence is false then q can be true or false as i've already explained to this the question of entailment hardly arises in such situations then we have reversed the situation and we can see if q is false then p has to be false if king or emperor is not dead then the question of uh, an arcsis a killing the emperor uh, is not there that's also false uh, if q is true then p can be true or false because a relationship of entailment is conditioned somehow with uh, with p the first sentence first sentence is the one which entails the second one if the second one is is false we can see the first one would be false but if the second one is true and the first one is true and it leads towards first one it can be true or false because entailment would arise with the substance of the first sentence it's not with the substance of the second sentence when this set of relation uh, relationship hold between p and q p entails q from this table we can see that only the truth or the falsity of the entail, entailed sentence have consequence for the other sentence 